Hi everyone, I am Arunava, a YSP this summer working with Dr. Tony. And today I'm going to talk about intrinsically disordered proteins in phase separation from origins of life to modern cells. So you guys might be aware of the opadin haldin hypothesis, which states that coserates or droplets encapsulating life-relevant molecules arose in a warm little pond or a primordial soup of sorts and uh, these droplets evolved into all life on Earth as we know it. Now, these droplets basically segregated or separated themselves from the warm little pond or the environment. And this phenomenon is nothing but phase separation. So this uh, involves one or more polymers. And as you can see in this diagram, uh, two polymers indicated in uh, green and purple can segregate themselves from each other to form segregative LLPS systems or segregative liquid-liquid phase separated systems. And these uh, are not coservates. They, they don't form coservates or toxins. But if uh, these polymers are oppositely charged, they can associate with themselves and form complex coservates, uh, as you can see in this image. Uh, interestingly, if a single polymer is involved and interactions within itself or with each other of the same type uh, can form simple coservates, as you can see here. Now, something that should be noted is that biomolecules and polymers uh, can basically uh, segregate or encapsulate themselves out of the environment that they are in without the presence of a membrane. Which brings me to the question, uh, are all cell organelles bound by membrane? So the short answer is no. Uh, it's, uh, so contrary to the popular belief, uh, we have a lot of organelles in our cells which are not bound by any membrane. So this is an image of a eukaryotic cell. And as you can see here, a lot of organelles which are indicated by uh, dash lines are membraneless. So these organelles perform a lot of functions like uh, ribosome synthesis, RNA splicing, uh, stress regulation, uh, signal transduction, and much more. So these membraneless organelles are synthesized by unique set of proteins known as intrinsically disordered proteins. So they are not our usual uh, structured proteins uh, and as you can see from these GIF images, these proteins are basically floppy, right? So they are basically changing their confer, uh, conformation at regular time intervals. And that's why they do not have a fixed or order structure at a given time interval. Also, they are composed mostly of charge residues and they're composed of uh, am limited amino acids out of the 20 that we know of. Uh, however, when they bind with each other or with an RNA or a DNA, they can obtain a stable 3D structure. And the proteins which do so are nothing but RNA binding or DNA binding protein. And finally, they are responsible for the formation and a lot of functions of membraneless organisms. Now, let's look at the work that has been done before with respect to primitive cursors. So Sidney Fox, a uh, popular biochemist, uh, was the first one to synthesize proteinoids, uh, which are basically precursor proteins under conditions similar to prebiotic. And he basically mixed these proteinoids with water, and uh, that yielded small droplets known as microspheres. So these proteinoids were found to be of low complexity and con they contain mostly charged residues, uh, which is quite similar to ID. And that's why it was hypothesized that proteinoids were precursors of IDPs and primordial IDPs formed microsphere-like droplets and stuff. But the work that has not been done is a proper comparison between modern IDPs that form membraneless organisms with primitive uh, peptides that can form primitive coservates on the basis of amino acid composition and length of protein. 
So now we are going to see how IDPs that form membranous organelles cells can somehow be correlated with primitive IDPs that probably form primitive percolate on earlier and vice versa. So now let's start with the amino acid composition similarity between peptides uh, that form primitive coservates and are forming membranous organelles in modern cells. So before delving into the topic, I should mention that all amino acids did not evolve at the same time. So aromatic amino acids that are much uh, more complex and have a higher molecular weight than others and which promote structure in structure pro proteins evolve much later. So the late evolution of these aromatic amino acids indicate that primitive disordered proteins might have probably been disordered. And uh, at least those which evolve uh, before uh, the evolution of aromatic amino acids. And this is supported by the fact that modern IDPs have limited aromatic amino acids and uh, mostly charged amino acids are present which promote disorder in IDP. So let's talk about how charged amino acids uh, in primitive and modern phase separation uh, have a role. So there are certain domains, charged domains, called as the RGG or arginine glycine glycine domains that are present in modern IDPs, which can phase separate alone without the requirement of any other part of uh, the protein or the IDP, which is pretty cool. Uh, and also it has been hypothesized that RGG domains evolve much early and have uh, probably been responsible for uh, regulating primitive RNA metabolism and folding. Now, these uh, studies should probably show hint that short disordered RGGs or RGG containing peptide uh, gave rise to primitive perseverance on earlier. So, to continue on this topic, uh, there are certain homopeptides like polylysin and polyarginine, which are polycations and polyanions. Uh, which have been found to be associated with these RGG domains. And these homopeptides are found to be unstructured and are considered to be IDP model. Now, what's interesting about these homopeptides is that they are also used in primitive coservate formation in vitro and uh, their associated study. Now, this particular aspect links the role of charged amino acid residues in modern IDPs uh, with primitive peptides that probably gave rise to primitive coservates uh, on earlier. Now let's shift the gears a bit and let's talk about the role of non-canonical amino acids in primitive coservate formation and its relation with modern proteins. Uh, so non-canonical amino acids are those which are not present in modern proteins, but are thought to be present in primitive uh, proteins. So in a study, uh, peptide that can bind to DNA, uh, the triple H motif was uh, ancestrally reconstructed into a protein by replacing the lysine residues with the non-canonical ornithine amino acid. Now, ornithine is considered to be a precursor of lysine, and that's why the resultant protein uh, is thought to be kind of similar to uh, primitive peptides that existed earlier. Now, when this uh, primitive peptide was mixed with polyU or polyuridylic acid RNA, it yielded small droplets or coservates, which is quite interesting because this kind of hints that ancestral D, uh, disordered proteins that contain non-canonical amino acids like ornithine form primitive coservates. So now let's look at the length aspect and how length of peptides was responsible to form primitive coservates and how that can be linked uh, with the formation of membraneless organs. So structured proteins are they, they basically have a particular structure because they can fold themselves into a configuration 
that uh, has a hydrophobic uh, interior and a hydrophilic exterior. Now, this is possible only when a particular protein is quite large. But if you consider uh, the conditions of primitive earth, large protein synthesis would probably not have been possible, right? And that's why probably uh, primitive proteins were short peptides without any folding capabilities and were uh, thus quite disordered. Uh, this can be correlated with the fact that short RGG domains that I just discussed earlier uh, alone can phase separate. And uh, finally, a few minimalistic approaches have been uh, undertaken, which shows that small peptides uh, containing, uh, like small peptides like dipeptides, uh, which contain two amino acids only, can also form causes, which basically challenges the uh, usual theory that large peptides are always required for phase separation. So to conclude, uh, this review was an attempt to bridge the knowledge gap between primitive uh, and modern LLPS systems with respect to disordered peptides. And uh, in the process of uh, this uh, study, we have identified a few uh, research gaps. And some of them are the fact that primitive coservate formation has been rarely explored in context, context of primitive disordered peptides. Also, these primitive coservates have not much been uh, associated with membraneless organelles as well in cells. So, a possible way to address these research gaps is probably to ancestrally reconstruct uh, IDPs that form membraneless organelles uh, with prebiotic disordered proteins uh, and test the ability of these prebiotic proteins to form coservates. So finally, I want to thank my project mentor, Dr. Tony, for helping me show out, show out throughout this project. And my fellow project vice keys, uh, Srishti, Prachiti, Tan, and Ritwik for helping me immensely. Uh, so now you can sip on your primordial soups and ask questions. Thank you. Great job, Aranava. That really came together really well compared to your practice session. I love it. That's a great talk. Are there any questions from our audience? I see a hand going up, and it's Sanjoy for the win. Ornava, thank you very much for your presentation. Is there an evolutionary advantage for proteins to remain intrinsically disordered even today? Uh, so, yeah. Uh... We, we usually uh, think that uh, structured proteins evolve from disordered proteins, but as we can see, uh, and as I've mentioned, membraneless organelles are uh, basically made up of intrinsically disordered proteins. And that uh, shows that it still has a lot of relevance uh, in modern life because these disordered proteins are responsible for quite crucial roles in modern cells. As I had mentioned, ribosome synthesis, RNA splicing, like the nuclei, nucleoli in the nucleus is responsible for uh, RNA synthesis. And that is possible only because nucleoli is a membraneless uh, organ, which is synthesized by ID. So yeah, that's one example, but there are so many examples why disordered proteins are pretty much relevant in modern. So life requires both structural proteins, like ribosome and ATP synthase and all that, and the intrinsically disordered proteins, is that right? Yeah, super interesting, thank you.